Hello, good morning. Welcome to our service at Goodside Christian Church. Thank you for your support and your comments. If you're new here this morning, we're a small family church in Cutsite near Castleford. We've all been affected over the last few months in different ways um, with the virus and, and just real living and, and survival. Without our faith in the Lord Jesus and without his love surrounding us, we would have struggled even more. But we've made it to February the 7th, 2021, and this morning we head back to Romans chapter 8. If you can get your Bibles ready, verses 18 to 39. Um, we go back to Romans. We've been in, in the book of Ruth in the Old Testament for four weeks. We've enjoyed some lovely times there and, uh, and learned lots of new things. And as a church, we, we give thanks for uh, the messages that have been brought to us over the last month. But before we, we move into Romans, uh, let's listen to our first song, My Lighthouse. Just sit back and enjoy, and I'm sure you'll know the words to this song. Thank you. In my wrestling my doubts in my failures you won't walk out your great love will lead me through you are the peace in my troubled sea whoa you are the peace in my troubled sea in the silence you won't let go in the questions your truth will hold your great love will lead me through you are the peace in my troubled sea whoa you are the peace in my troubled sea my lighthouse my lighthouse shining in the darkness i will follow you to show Love will lead me through 
Yeah, brings back memories, doesn't it? Lovely words. And we do need to focus on that lighthouse that will shine a beacon in the darkness that often surrounds us um, in today. Okay, let's just pray. Let's, let's pray a prayer of hope. This chapter this morning speaks about our weakness in prayer. So let's join together as a church and uh, you'll be praying for your family, for your relationships, for lots of different things. So uh, join with me as I pray for the, uh, the church at Cutsack. Father, we thank you for your goodness to us. We thank you for the many blessings that you've bestowed upon us. We thank you that in this real world in which you created, this morning we're going to be looking at how creation groans and how the children of God, um, how those of us who have, have a faith in you, groan um, because we've had a taste of the Lord Jesus and this world has just lost its shape and it's lost its direction. We, we just give thanks this morning that um, when we are struggling in our prayer life and our prayer time, when we don't feel like praying, when we can't pray, this chapter this morning helps us to reconsider that when we're lost for words, the Holy Spirit, this comforter that you've given us, this secret weapon, this prayer app that comes alongside us and it just fills in the missing spaces, the missing words. When we're overcome with tears and grief and emotion, when we can't face or can't bear to think about the present situation in our own circumstances, the Holy Spirit comes alongside and presents our thoughts from our heart, and that is so amazing in itself, and brings them to our Saviour, the Lord Jesus, our High Priest, and he brings them to you, our Father God. Oh, we thank you for that. Many is the time, many is the day, many is the situation where we've been lost for words, and we come to you, and we give thanks, and we praise you, and we thank you, and we just um, thank you for your support this week um, with Amy, um, with a brother in hospital, he's on the mend, and the results from the operation so far are, um, are good, and we just pray that um, you'll continue to, to surround Amy with your presence. We pray for Pauline and we thank you for her. And we pray for her husband Arthur, who's, who's not too good at the moment, and for um, her uncle, um, again, who's, who's just really struggling with um, with life and with health issues. And we, we pray for the comfort that you can only give in these situations. For others in our church that we're not aware of, but for those rather struggling with employment, for those who are financially just really really finding the present circumstances difficult we pray that in a practical way that each of us would look out for our, our brothers and our sisters and in a spiritual way our father god that um, you would bring relief to those who are crying out to you today we thank you for your presence with us your promise that you'll never leave us nor forsake us for those who have had birthdays we give thanks for those who've had difficult news to take we, we just pray that your your long arm of 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 peace and love will will surround your hand will will grip us as we as we go through these situations of difficulty and father we thank you that amongst all these uh, things that are taking place that you have promised to uh, to lead us and to direct us and to lead us home and we, and we look forward to that to that time when we, we will see the Lord Jesus face to face. So this morning we just we just thank you for another opportunity to look at your word and we pray that this guide of ours, the Holy Spirit, will just teach different members of our church the things that they need to be taught today. And we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, welcome back. So um, we've just want to remi uh, remind our fellowship, um, this young church family at, uh, at Castleford, um, Sam Barry has had a birthday this week, she's getting pretty ancient now, and Joanne is even more ancient, um, that she's had a birthday, Rachel, she's had a birthday, I don't think she'll fit the cakes, uh, the candles on a cake, um, she's that old, but little Marilyn, um, happy birthday to you, 
you're still in your in your prime and in your youth and I hope you've enjoyed it if you're able to listen to this and Lucy um, you'll be celebrating in June and I guess we're all going to be invited maybe not but you want the presents all right we'll go with that but happy birthday to you all let's just sit back and enjoy a reading from a newly married lady Mrs McNair from Newcastle sounds very posh doesn't it you might recognize this lady as she reads to us from Romans uh, chapter 8. Over to you, Envy. Thank you. Morning, everyone, from um, our first home together in Newcastle. Um, Ryan and I are both well. Uh, I'm just finishing off my studies at university and he's still working at the church. Um, we've got a bit of a drink day here, as my new Scottish husband would say. Um, but other than that, we are well. Um, and I'm going to be reading this morning um, from Romans chapter 8. And we're going to start at verse 18. I consider that our present sufferings are not worth comparing with the glory that will be revealed in us. For the creation waits in eager expectation for the children of God to be revealed. For the creation was subjected to frustration, not by its own choice, but by the will of the one who subjected it, in hope that the creation itself will be liberated from its bondage to decay and brought into the freedom and glory of the children of God. We know that the whole creation has been groaning, as in the pains of childbirth right up to the present time. Not only so, but we ourselves, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, groan inwardly as we wait eagerly for our adoption to sonship, the redemption of our bodies. For in this hope we were saved, but hope that is seen is no hope at all. Who hopes for what they already have? But if we hope for what we do not yet have, we wait for it patiently. In the same way, the Spirit helps us in our weakness. We do not know what we ought to pray for, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us through wordless groans. And he who searches our hearts knows the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for God's people in accordance with the will of God. And we know that in all things God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. For those God foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his Son, that he might be the firstborn among many brothers and sisters. And those he predestined, he also called. Those he called, he also justified. Those he justified, he also glorified. What then shall we say in response to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, how will he not also, along with him, graciously give us all things? Who will bring any charge against those whom God has chosen? It is God who justifies. Who then is the one who condemns? No one. Christ Jesus who died, more than that, who was raised to life, is at the right hand of God and is also interceding for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble or hardship or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword? As it is written, for your sake we face death all day long. We are considered as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future nor any powers neither height nor depth nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of god that is in christ jesus our lord well thank you indy you're looking good as mrs mcnair um even though you might um well you are enjoying married life and you and ryan are, are really um it's, it's amazing that you got through the wedding you were determined and we all know how determined you are and uh, things went really well and we're so pleased even though maybe you wish mum was there sometimes to do the washing for you um i know i said i wouldn't say that but um, a big hint often helps but uh, thank you really good to see you back on our screen today and uh, every blessing with um, your relationship and with your work um, and, and, and your exams that you're taking up there in Newcastle. Okay, back we are to, uh, to Romans chapter 8. Just before 
we sort of um, look properly at the passage. I was reminded just recently um, when someone told me, uh, I refused to believe that my friend was stealing from his job as a road worker. Um, but when I went round to his house um, and looked in his garage, the signs were all there. And whether you get that or, or you don't get that, um, I have to smile inside because I like the little jokes. But um, Paul, in this uh, opening of, of Romans chapter 8, in the middle of the chapter, all the signs are there. He tells us about um, the suffering and he tells us about the glory. So open the Bible, read it down, follow it with your finger and uh, line by line. And it, it reminds us this chapter of the struggles and the disappointments and the blessings. But he wants to lift us up into thinking about living in heaven. So when you become a Christian, you leave certain things behind. You have a different mindset in the way you think things through. And take hold of this. You are now swimming against the current of the world. We now live in. And this means that we inherit, and don't get upset, don't get uh, too, too waylaid, but we inherit a new set of problems. But to combat this, we've been given a helper, a guide, and an automatic prayer app. And this is the Holy Spirit. And this has been downloaded when we made the choice to follow Jesus and to follow and to commit to his rules. And remember that. That's a commitment that you made. Not to me, not to the church at Kutzak, but to the Lord Jesus himself. And if you aren't a follower um, yet, then we, we hope and pray as, as we go through the passage this morning that you'll, you'll want to find out more about not just the sufferings now that are going on in the world, but about the glory, about heaven, that's a reality and that's, that's coming. And, and we can't wait to be in the presence of the Lord Jesus. So this chapter explains how and why we need the Holy Spirit um, to be more than conquerors in the daily battles that we face. And we're going to look at how we can be more than, more than a conqueror even in the difficulties and even in the struggles. So verse 18, here we go, Romans chapter 8. We first look at the present sufferings, the difficult situations Christians are going through today. And then Paul doesn't leave us there. He says, look, um, we have a future. Look at heaven. And he often, he, he calls it glory. But I, I would suggest that it, um, this is all part of heaven, what heaven looks like, the future. Um, no more tears, no more suffering, no more death, no more pain, no more sin, but just everlasting life in the presence of the Lord Jesus. You see, you don't get one without the other. Suffering and glory go together. They are married together or welded together. The Christian life is not about the subtraction of suffering. That suffering being taken away and being made easy. And I know that's hard to understand, but it's about the addition of grace to go through the suffering. God has a higher purpose for our suffering. That's what we've got to get into. The example here is like looking at a set of scales. The old fashioned scales, you know, where you put something on one side, a weight, and you counterbalance it with a weight on the other side. Well, Paul is painting a picture of scales here because it, what he's saying is this, that it's like looking at some scales and our suffering being far outweighed by the overpowering weight of heaven and glory. In other words, this picture is like a feather on one side of our sufferings and a tongue weight on the other side of the glory of heaven, of the future, of eternal life. This is what we need to, to focus on. So we often get the balance wrong and we focus on our sufferings and that's something we all do, me in particular. We focus on the negative sides, the negative aspects, but we only glance now and then at the future of heaven. So we need to take a little sidestep into 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and, and starting to read at verse 16. And, and he says this, we, we do not lose heart, though outwardly we are wasting away, yet inwardly 
we are being renewed day by day. Sometimes we miss that. Sometimes we, we're not sure of that. Sometimes we don't see the effect of that straight away. Verse 17 of 2 Corinthians 4 says this, For our light and momentary troubles are achieving for us an eternal glory that far outweighs them all, the feather and the tongue weight, the sufferings and the glory. For what is seen is temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. Depending on what you are going through, and if you have a living relationship with Jesus, will determine how you respond in your mind as I read this verse again. Light and momentary troubles. Do you, do you sort of believe that? They're not so light, are they? They don't seem to just happen for a moment. They seem to drag on for a long time. And sometimes there seem to be no end. Maybe we should say to Paul, well, maybe, Paul, you should come and live in my world for a week. And Paul reminds us in another one of his letters that we should set our affections on things above. Look at the scales, look at the feather, look at the tongue weight and recognise what God's got planned for us. And he wants to build our character and he wants to take us through situations to make us more like his son, Jesus. So let's move on to uh, just down this chapter to verse 19 and through to 22. And here we've got a, a situation where creation groans. Go back to Genesis 1 and verse 31. Skip back really quickly. And you'll see that after God had finished his creation, he said it was a good creation. Here in Romans chapter 8, we are told that it's a creation that is groaning. So Paul looks forward into the future um, in his lifetime, and then he's looking forward into, into our lifetime, and he's, he's saying that this creation is groaning. The, the difficulty in the world, the sin that's overrun. We look back to the Garden of Eden, in Genesis chapter 1 and we recognise that the ground was cursed because of Adam's sin. Thorns and thistles appeared. You look to Revelation 22 and verse 3 and it says this, no longer will there be any, any curse. God's going to renew the creation. He's going to make all things new. Yes, we have a new creation if we're born again in the Lord Jesus creation waits in verses 19 to 22 to be liberated to be set free verses 23 to 25 and these things are only brief i understand that but um, you can look at your leisure and just begin to enjoy the creation that groans but also the child of god who groans so he, he says to us here we have experienced the first fruits of the Spirit. What does that mean? <clears throat> We've tasted what it's like to be a follower of Jesus. We think of heaven and seeing Jesus with a new body that will not decay. We have had our appetites wetted. We have realised there is a real life to enjoy. No more tears. No more sickness. But just think about this bit. What I've been reminded of is that we have a redeemed soul inside an unredeemed body hey what does that mean well our soul has been saved but our body is decaying and paul's writing about that here verse 25 we hope for what we do not yet have if we lose sight of this hope we forfeit joy and peace and love the darker the trial the brighter the hope the darker the situation, the brighter the hope. The darker the struggle, the brighter the hope. The darker the trial, the brighter the hope. Creation groans, the child of God groans. If you want another C, it could be the comforter groans, but the Holy Spirit groans. Because prayer is a work of the Trinity. It's access to the Father God, through the Son, the Lord Jesus, by the Holy Spirit. 
you could almost say that in fact Christian prayer is impossible without the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> Christian prayer is impossible without the Holy Spirit. And as we look at this chapter, he, he goes there in the middle of the chapter, he says, in our weakness, we do not know what to pray for. Do we pray for our deliverance from our sufferings? Or do we pray for the strength to endure them? Have you ever been lost in that situation? How do we pray for someone who is losing their life? How do we pray for someone that, um, that, that there's no recovery? What about a relationship situation? <clears throat> we just struggle, don't we, to know the will of God and, and we struggle in a sense to know how and why and where and, and what to pray. You've been, ever been in a church meeting <clears throat> and there's a silence, it's a prayer meeting and nobody's praying. We feel we ought to pray because there is a silence, not because we have something to say, maybe. This verse comes into its own here because it says the Spirit helps us. The Spirit intercedes for us. The Spirit understands God's will for us. This word helps us. Uh, again, I'm not I'm not a Greek scholar. I just read commentaries and you look at it and you try and understand and get the middle line of what the right wing and the left wing are saying and then you, you try and ask the Holy Spirit to help you to understand it. But it when it says helps us, it simply means it, the Holy Spirit lays hold of us, pulls us along. So you're in the prayer meeting or you're praying in your, on your own at home and you're not sure what to say and the Holy Spirit just picks up and, and shoves and pulls and encourages and moves us along. <clears throat> we have been given a gift from God to enable us to pray. It's not a bad thing not to know what to pray for. It means the Holy Spirit will come alongside and make our words of silence perfect and presentable before God. <coughs> Excuse me. We're just going to look at the last few verses. It's a bit in the middle. Um, I'm, I'm just led to this bit here just for now. Um, but there's a lot more in, in, in the section. Um, but verses 31 to 39. I just want to, to try and encourage as we as we come to the, the last few bits in the chapter. Verse 31, it says, you'll never, sorry, if God is for us, who can be against us? God wants the best for us. You'll never be on your own again as a follower of the Lord Jesus. Verse 37 says, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. Imagine a member of the family of your family <clears throat> and you're praying for that member to become a Christian or maybe it's someone in the family they've just stopped believing or following Jesus and you run out of words to say we have to let the Holy Spirit in let God's love overpower our loved ones with God's help we certainly can be more than conquerors verse 39 nothing can or will be able to separate us from the love of God. <clears throat> Paul's taken us on a little journey. He says, yeah, we're in the present and the sufferings. You can't get away from that because it's married or welded into the fact of glory or heaven. You can't have one without the other. You could almost go on to say that if you're not suffering, um, Maybe you're not living the life that God wants you to live. If you're just listening today and you're in our family or, or, or you're praying for a family member or, or you're not a Christian yourself. There's no other life like it. God sent his son, the Lord Jesus. And we have this in these verses in Romans chapter 8. That he might die on the cross. He spared not his own son in Romans chapter 8. He gave his own son that we might have everlasting life that your sin would be dealt with and taken away, that you can not only dream of heaven, but you will have a place in heaven 
that you will go to heaven to be with the Lord Jesus. Thank you for listening. Valentine's Day is coming up fast. There's lots to look forward to and Easter's approaching on the horizon. Keep safe. Keep loving the Lord Jesus. Keep praying to the Lord Jesus, even when the words are difficult to say. May God bless you and keep you. And may his face shine upon you. Let's just pray together, shall we? Father, we thank you that your word is divine, your word is true. That we can't change a word that's already been written down in the canon of scripture. And we ask that as you intercede for us in our words of prayer that there will be someone in our local church today or someone in the families that we re that represent the church that will turn to you and follow you and ask for forgiveness that their sins will be taken away and thrown as the scriptures tell us into the deepest sea and forgotten forever and ever father we pray that our families might be complete in the lord jesus totally saved and belonging to the family of God and living as those who follow Jesus. We ask all these things in the beautiful name that's above every name. Amen. Okay, hope you've enjoyed. Look forward to, uh, to seeing you soon. God bless.